Hi, nice to meet you guys. My name is Lee Jung Kim, as Vicky introduced. Um, uh, I'm going to talk about how to implement T in real classroom. Okay. Uh, as you already know, the goal of English classroom is to enhance communicative competence of the students. So this is why we use TEE, which is teaching English in English. So I looked up a lot of resources on the internet. There are a lot of books and online courses, and some of them I took. But the problem is that teaching English in English works really, really well in a teaching training program with other teacher trainings. They pretend to be students and they seem to understand everything that I say, right? But the problem is that it doesn't seem to work well with my own students in my own classroom. Why? Why? I thought about the reasons. So I made a conclusion which is like uh, this. For students, TEE, using TEE is like watching this kind of video clip. Did you understand the video clip? No. Because this video clip is in Greek, Greek language. So, for students using TE, teacher who is using TE is like watching this. It shouldn't be, right? So, is, then, is T the best way to just show off our own English proficiency? It shouldn't be. And what do we have to do? And how can we use T in, in our own classroom, in real classroom? So these are the, uh, I brought some questions that I was asked by other teachers. The first question is that the English proficiency level of my students is too low. Can I still use TE in my class? What is the answer? Is it yes or no? Yes. So the first thing is that you shouldn't speak Greek. You have to use only plain and easy words in your own classroom with your own students. So, like I said before, you shouldn't use Greek. They have to understand what you say, right? The second one is that you have to keep everything simple and short. So this is how I use in my own classroom. This is the typical words that I use in my own classroom. And maybe you might use this kind of uh, words in your own classroom. So, um, I will say this first. Okay, everyone, look at the board. What is the title? Can you read the title together? Wordmaster. Okay, repeat after me. Wordmaster. 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 Very good. Okay, I, you repeat it after me. And these are here. You can see the words on the left side column. Okay, listen and repeat after me. Cause. 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 Scare. 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 So like this, you can repeat after me, word by word. And then, always we have to show students and then tell something. So in the very first class of my other semester, I write this on the board. So hi, blank, what's blank in Korean? It's blank in Korean. So I write this uh, sentence structure on the board and I ask students to read the, this kind of things together. And then I can, I ask students to use this sentence structure to uh, check the answers. So hi Mindy, what's cause in Korean? Okay, can anyone help here? Can anyone help me here? Okay, what's cause in Korean? 
Very good. It's Yagi Harai Korea. Well done. So, and this time, also I asked Binky to ask Paula to ask this question. Binky, can you ask this question to Bala about number two? Okay, Bala, what's scary in Korean? Very good. Well done. It's Gokchuga in Korea, like this. Yeah, go to that. Well done. It's okay. <laughs> nice try. Okay. <laughs> Next one. I, like, I did, like I did before, like, I give this kind of feedback. Okay, the next one is this. Simpson, which is the best character for the students, writes something repeatedly, right? So the fourth one is repetition. Repetition. So Bingi asked Pala the second question, uh, the question with uh, number two, right? Pala, can you ask this question to Draper <laughs> about number three? Uh, for, uh, it's, it's Very good, well done. Okay, it's time. Can you keep going, please, with number four to Eric? Okay, can you can you repeat after me? Apology. Apology. Okay, can you try one more time, please? Apology. Hi, Aaron. What's apology in Korean? It's Papa. <laughs> <laughs> can you finish the sentence? In Korean. Very good. Well done. Like this. I'll still repeat the same structure over and over again. So while they are doing this, they I'll uh, memorize the sentence structure. So, um, so at the end of the semester or the school year, students uh, uh, memorize the sentence structure internally so that they can use this kind of structure outside of the school. Like this. So, if I sum up this, Okay, T starts first, teacher starts first, and then student keeps doing it, and then finally, the last student asks teacher the same sentence structure. So we call it TSST, right? Some of you might have already heard about this. Okay. The second question is that I tried using T in class, but students are afraid of speaking in English in class. We are too conscious about losing face. I'm in charge of the second grade of middle school. So the peer pressure is very severe for them. So this is uh, one thing that I have to uh, keep in mind. Still, we can do something for them. First one is to build positive atmosphere. It sounds very vague, but actually you can do something with this. So like I did, before, to, like I said before, to Bala and other um, instructors here, like student, my students here, I said, nice try, good guess, can you try one more time, well done. Yeah, so I can clap hands or we can clap hands together for the students. And second one is, sometimes I make mistakes. Sometimes. So I use, I pronounce the words in the wrong way, so that students feel comfortable about making mistakes in class. And also I use UMF TV. So you can see a video clip about General Assembly. Uh, their accents are very diverse. So some are from India, South Africa, Japan, Korea. Even though their accents are very strong and different, still they are very important people in the world, right? So if you keep saying that to students, uh, at the end, students don't care about their accents, so that they can feel very comfortable about making, making mistakes and like, Korean accents. Okay, how would you feel? What would you feel when you experience this? <laughs> no can you put the paper in the bathroom, and there's no one at home, or in a school, or the next book, whatever. Our students feel the same way in class when we use English in our own English classroom. 
So we have to get them prepared for the this kind of um, situation with a lot of toilet tissues, right? So we have to get to the prepared not to feel frustrated. How? So whenever I check the answers of the homework homework assignments, at first I gave I give them time to think about the answer by themselves individually. And then I ask them to check the answers with their partner for two minutes or one minute or 30 seconds, at least 10 seconds. And after that, I ask them to check the answers with people who are sitting around them, like this. And then we check the answers as a whole class. So because they are preparing for the a whole class activity, they feel very comfortable. So, and the next one is this. From easy to challenging. Always we have to remember this. Do you remember the, the slide which says, keep it simple, stupid, like this? So from easy to challenging. So first, maybe in March, uh, if I use, can you read the next question, this kind of structure? And then in April or May, I, I would ask the second question. And at the end of the semester or school year, I ask the, the red sentence for students so that they feel gradually comfortable about using difficult um, levels of sentences. Third one, the biggest problem as a middle school and high school uh, teachers. So in middle school or high school grammar lessons are really necessary because the school year is oriented by tests. Then how can I use T in grammar class? So these are the words that we have to use in our own grammar lesson to teach grammar in English. But we have to remember that no fancy words. You shouldn't use those words. Students are not interested in your words preposition, conjunction, or declension, which I don't really know. Okay. <laughs> so here is the typical grammar worksheet that I use. Still, I can use English in my class. So we can use this kind of structure. Can you read the number something, please? So I, I would say, Mingi, can you pick someone and ask this question, please? And then Mingi would say, Okay, uh, hi Bala, can you read the sentence number one? Then Bala will say, mom wanted me to learn how to play the piano like this. Still I'm using English, right? Even though I don't teach grammar in English, still I'm using English in my own classroom. This is more important than um, burdening students with a lot of grammar words in English. Okay. So, uh, to wrap up, I will suggest you, first, we have to think about why we use TE for ourselves or for students. We are using TE for our own students, not for ourselves. And second, we have to get ourselves ready for TE. Uh, there are a lot of online courses and books, uh, books about TE, so get yourself prepared for that. And third one. Uh, teachers tend to expect too much about using TE in our own classroom, then this is why we give up very easily. So you shouldn't expect too much at first. We need time to prepare. Students, they, they also need, to time, need time to prepare for TE. And uh, school year starts in March, so we have to plan everything by February so that we can start from the very first class of our school year. This is it, thank you for listening.